and I, you know, I share this. It's a, this is an interesting time for me. I've, I've shared some of my story with you. Uh, I've I've lost my job um, uh, in the past. I've uh, I've had uh, I've had two business failures, and uh, I've had a tra traumatic knee injury. Uh, and I've and currently, I'm actually uh, uh, working through Lyme disease. And many of you may not realize that uh, uh, that I uh, I contracted Lyme disease. I mean, I guess some tick thought that I was uh, I was quite profound, <laughs> decided to uh, to hit me with some Lyme disease, and so uh, and uh, and what was amazing about it was that suddenly I felt low energy. Right? Suddenly I felt that my energy wasn't where it needed to be. Now, um, candidly, I didn't realize at first that it was something phys physically wrong with me. I thought that you know maybe I was just burnt out. Maybe I just I needed more recovery time. So I started to take some more time for myself. Started to practice some more recovery time. And what I found was is I wasn't sleeping less. I was starting to sleep more. So what did I do? Well, um, I wasn't good with that. My the belief that I had in myself was I should have a higher energy level. I'm used to a higher energy level, so I started to uh, do some investigative work. I signed up for some biomarker testing, some health testing, which gave me some great insight. Suggested that there may be some things that were off. I had a, a doctor's appointment with an online doctor, and they shared with me some of the biomarkers. Hey, here are some supplements to start. Here are some things to try. Here are some dietary changes. Here are some exercise changes. And I implemented those, and they weren't really working. They weren't moving the dial. I took the testing to my internist. And he looked over everything. Sounds like everything is is good. Sounds like you're doing the right things. Just keep at it. I said, No, doc, no. I'm not good with that. I'm not good with hey, just keep going because my energy should be better. So, okay, let's redo your blood test, and we'll add some additional tests for things that might cause fatigue. And one of those tests was a Lyme test. And sure enough, came back. Uh, the test came back, and I was positive uh, on something like four different tests for Lyme disease. Had I just been good, had my had my belief in myself been, oh, I'm just burnt out. I just need recovery time. I just need to sleep more. Had that been my dominant belief, put in the chat, where would I probably have stayed? In the chat, if my dominant belief had stayed, hey, I'm tired, I should just, yeah, I should just, uh, you know, I should, I'm burnt out, I'm, you know, and absolutely still in bed, tired, undiagnosed, right? If that had had sick and sick and still exhausted no improvement at 100% all of those things those things would have been would have stayed my dominant story but instead what I what I what I chose to do is practice a different belief I chose to practice a different belief and that belief was hey I want to I want high energy I want to recover the energetic version of myself. So I practiced that and I visualized that person. I had a vision of that person and I went after that person. I went after that vision. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the rules of upstart and then the next steps to get you to where you want to go. All right, so let's, I'm going to share the screen here. And
let's start with the rules of the three rules of upstart. Now your first rule of upstart, number one, rule number one, build your belief. Build your belief. Now what does that mean, build your belief? What I just shared with you in my personal story was that I needed to build my belief, right? My belief, my initial belief was I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I'm 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 not I I need to I need to rest. Now I'm not saying that those that there wasn't some component of those things that was necessary, but I needed to build my I needed to rebuild my belief, a belief that was empowering and not a disempowering belief. So build the belief that you want. That's rule number 1. Now let's talk about rule number one. So rule number one is about belief, and I shared with you my belief, I shared with you the story of Carrie Strug and her belief, and there's an interesting uh, psychologist uh, who, um, who she uh, passed away but studied uh, and was a, a leader in the field of psychology as it relates to change and as it relates to the the stages of grief and the stages of change in our lives and her uh, her name was Dr. Kubler Ross and Dr. Kubler Ross she came up with a what she calls a change curve and many of you might have seen the five stages of grief which is uh, which is something that she's uh, that she developed initially and this is a, a similar concept called the change curve okay it's called the change curve and the reason we're talking about it is because if you want to make change in your life right that what we're talking about with upstart is we're talking about making change we're talking about making change making positive change in your life so if you look at the kubler ross change curve you're going to see the different stages of change starts with shock there's some shock that that often starts before we hit a change. So in my case, uh, as if we refer back to the the Lyme disease that I'm that I'm working through, I was my the shock was I have no energy. That was my shock. Then you move into this denial phase, this denial phase, and you can think about any change in your life. You're probably going to recognize some of these steps. In my case, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm denying that there's something wrong with me. I say, yeah, you know, I'm burnt out. I'm coming up with excuses, reasons, right? Coming up with reasons for why this is happening to me. How many of you guys say, well, why is this happening to me? <laughs> so I'm not the only person that's probably had that feeling, right? Why is this happening to me? That guess what? That's denial. Then you've got frustration. Frustration. There are a lot of four-letter words that come out with uh, of, of frustration, right? A lot of use of con regular use of four-letter words and frustration. Um, it, it doesn't really help, but but it's normal, right? The emotions of frustration are normal. Oh my God! I can't believe I'm so tired. Why am I so tired? You know, f I'm so tired. Then depression. Then, man, I'm am just I'm just gonna lie in the bed. I'm gonna take a nap this afternoon. Now, finally, at some point, at some point, you can't stay in bed. I mean, I know you, I know all of you to be functioning adults, so I know that you cannot stay in bed for a long long stretches of your life, right? So at some point, you then have to make a change, and that's when you start the process. You see this upward curve here where you go into experimentation. What did I do? I uh, signed up for some biomarker testing. Okay, let me, let me see what's if something physically wrong with me. And that, that component is the decision component. I'm gonna decide to do some things. Test for, test for biomarkers. 
uh, do follow-up testing with my internist and now I'm undergoing uh, treatment and the, and uh, I, will, I will fully recover so Lyme disease is not a permanent uh, permanent place in time I will fully recover uh, so uh, I'm now in the process of integration the beauty, the, the beauty of antibiotics and, and meds today because I'm not uh, you know I'm gonna have to suffer Lyme disease for the rest of my life um, so that is essentially what the change curve that Dr. Kubler-Ross has, has developed. And we've all, if you think about your change, it's important to understand that these, these are in fact all of the emotions that we feel or all of the components that we have to go through to make any change in our lives. Problem. The curve, the, the model itself, the curve is missing three parts. It's missing three parts. Part number one is that change isn't linear. Change isn't linear, right? If you look at the curve here, all right, you don't go, you don't necessarily go, it's, it, it's not a straight line, the story that I shared with me, it's not a straight line. Um, you know, talking about uh, one of my current businesses, uh, my, my real estate team, I was sharing with my team yesterday that uh, I'm, I love our, our, our current team. Like our current team is 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 just a beautiful team. It's a fan, it's a it's a it's a fantastic family, and we were expressing with each other how how we really cared for each other. We we took time in our retreat yesterday to talk about it, to talk about the caring. But to get to the point of yesterday, to get to the point of having a caring team, I had to fail with two other versions of the same team. And that failure that that uh, part of uh, part of that part you know good chunk of those failures were my failures. But imagine I went through, you know, it's not it wasn't linear as you go through these failures, there was shock, denial, frustration, depression, then you might try something new and guess what? How many of you have, guys have tried something new, tried to make a change, and then you haven't been able to do it, and you go right back to frustration? <laughs> right? It's like, oh my God, what happened to me? Like, I was on this, you know, or something happens in life, right? Life happens, and all of a sudden, you're back to denial. Or, and you might even go all the way back to shock. I got the, you know, as we're talking about the, uh, you know, as we're, <laughs> as we're talking about the, uh, you know, m the, the Lyme disease, so I went, I'm, I'm going on vacation in a few weeks here, and I went and I got the, um, uh, I got, went and got the uh, COVID booster on Wednesday, no, uh, no, Tuesday, I got a, a COVID booster on Tuesday, and, um, and oh boy, yesterday evening, all of a sudden I start feeling uh, feverish. <laughs> start my my body starts hurting. I start feeling feverish. I'm you know, and imagine I'm I'm pushing through Lyme disease, <laughs> right? So I go. Uh, so I'm I'm thinking to myself. I mean, imagine all the things that you're going through, right? I'm just starting. I'm starting to feel the treatment working, and now I feel like I'm going backward to uh, to tired, and backward. I'm and and backward to even achy. So today I had to take a nap. I mean, this morning I said I said to myself, "Shit, I gotta be. You know, I I gotta be good for for upstart today." Right, so I, you know, I can, in in some respects, I went all the way back to uh, denial and frustration. So it's important to understand that while the change curve, the the elements of the change curve are very important, it's not linear. We're going to go through this process, and that's normal. 
and that's okay it's supposed to be that way and there'll be things that we can do to continue to move forward but understand that it's not linear it's also missing the visualization of something new the model is missing the visualization of something new if you think about the model right the model anticipates that we have a shock and then we are in denial and frustration but what if you just want to make a change how many of you guys um, aren't necessarily feeling terrible in 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 one of the domains of your life but you just want to make a positive change in 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 one of the areas of your life right so so you don't need to necessarily feel uh, feel a shock or frustration or and go through denial you don't have to go through those 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 components of the change curve what you do have to go through is you have to go through the visualization of something new we have to believe in where we want to go we have to see where we want to go to get to where we want to go and so the curve doesn't it doesn't it talks about that's experimentation in the curve but what would it look like if we didn't it have to experiment what would our lives look like if through the power of intention which is what many of you that are part of the leadership circle what we do right what if what if the power of intention was hey we're looking to move our lives forward in any given point in time and then rule number three or missing part number three is linking linking what you want with your why it's very important to link what you want with your why so how many of you guys have heard of the concept of finding your why you guys uh, that how important it is to find what's uh, there there is um, there's a there's a powerful belief that's come about in recent years and in order for us to really really move to a positive place in our lives we need to connect with our why and 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 another way to look at it is with our mission in life what is our mission in life what is our why what is our purpose uh, any company that's successful has a compelling vision a compelling why a compelling mission take Apple for example how many of you guys have Apple phones have, have iPhones okay so many of you have iPhones now uh, the iPhone is not the best phone the iPhone is not the best phone there are phones that are much better than the iPhone the iPhone if you ask an Apple executive hey what's the app the, the the Android phones are better phones they'll say yeah you're right the 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 Apple is not trying to be the best phone from a technological perspective that's not Apple's mission Apple's mission is to allow people to express themselves the way they want to express themselves. Apple Apple started as a revolution back in the, in the 80s there was a, one of their powerful uh, one of their powerful ads was a 1984 ad it was a big brother ad as we are part of the revolution and people that worked for Apple saw themselves as revolutionaries. 
They saw themselves as changing the way people live with a phone. And so what Apple understood is that Apple understood that the phone is more than the technology. The phone is a way of life. The phone is how you use the phone. It is how easy it is to use the phone. It is how easy it is to take a picture with the phone. It's how easy it is to play music with the phone. It is how easy it is to make the phone and integrate the phone into your life. I, you know, a few years ago, I went back and I, I bought a, a, at the recommendation of uh, of a great person, of great person that I know. I went and, and bought a. I switched over uh, to Android. And boy, what a pain in the butt! I'm sorry, guys, but I, mean, it's just, I was like, I, now I'm not going to tell you that I'm the most tech savvy person in the world, but I went back to to the iPhone quickly. Because I don't have time for that. I am not, my life is not about finding out how to massively use uh, the seven different levels of HD technology on my phone. I just want my phone to work well. That's all I need. I don't need it to, I don't need to program my life. I just want it to work well. That's why Apple has a 40% market share. has a dominant market share among phones because it just works well. It just integrates within our life. So we have to link. So what Apple knew is it's important to link to your why. Now what is why? What is why? Why is W what do I want? What do I want? H how do I go get it? How do I go get it? And then the why is who do you, why you want to be? Who do you want to be? So your why is about what do I, what do I want? Right? We have to articulate, we have to get clear about what we want in our lives. We need to understand how we're going to do it. And then we have to have a compelling, that compelling future, that compelling vision that you are who, that has to be part of it.